Hey guys, this is Aaron. We are on our sixth week of our architectural tips and tricks playlist. Um, and I had kind of a cool tip that I want to show you guys as far as creating door components. Um, I'm not going to go into dynamic components, making swing, that kind of stuff. There's other videos on that. Um, I just wanted to come up with or uh, show you a little, little tip I use for creating both the 2D and the 3D components uh, in the same spot. So let's go ahead and hop in and take a look at that. All right, first thing I want to do is I don't actually need my reference image anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take it and I'm going to put it onto its own layer. I'm just going to call this reference and toggle that off. I can flip it back on if I need it, but for what I'm doing, I actually have everything I need just in my openings. All right, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to use this door for an example. So I'm going to start by modeling my three-dimensional doorway. So I'm going to do just like I did with the window. I'm just going to stick a rectangle on here. So I'm going to click, whoops, a rectangle right here. I'm going to offset it, the trim width. Um, I'm actually going to draw an extra line from this intersection over to here and then get rid of these extra lines at the bottom. Don't actually need those. And then I can pull this out, whatever my trim width happens to be. All right. Now I'm going to grab all that triple click and I'm going to move it to the other side. So we have trim on the other side also. So very similar to what we did for windows, obviously stuck it on both sides. And while that other side, while this side is already selected right now, I'm going to shift, triple click the front, right click, make that a group. So I'm putting my trim in there. This is very basic. I didn't put the other materials on the inside. I didn't, you know, put a face on here. I, I, I'm just throwing this stuff together. You can put as much detail in here if you want strike plates, hinges, whatever you want can be added. I'm just doing this to kind of represent a door. So you guys get the idea. Here's my trim. That's not the part of the video I want to show. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a rectangle to represent the door. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to come out to here. Um, maybe I'll say it's three foot by inch and a half. All right. And then I'm going to pull that all the way up to the top, triple click that, and make another group. And now I'm going to take both groups and make them into a component. This is going to be my interior door. All right. Um, that looks good, but maybe for uh, my 3D model, what I actually want is that door to be partially open. Maybe this is going to go to uh, XR, you know, in a walkthrough, something like that. So I want the door out of the way. So maybe I'll grab that and I will just rotate it. It'll do like 45 degrees. All right. So that is a decent 3D component. I Again, I know we could go through here a little, little deeper. I could put a knob on here and, and put additional hardware hinges, that kind of thing. But right there, that real quick represents my, my 3D geometry. This is good. Um, the issue comes out when I take this into layout where I'm actually going to go make my uh, drawings. I may do something like I'll grab a section and I'll place it flat on top like this and I'll scoot it down. Oops. And I'll scoot it down. And then when I look at it from straight above, as I would for uh, creating my floor plan, I may not love this representation of a door. It, I could tell it's a door, it's great, but for 2D purposes, I may actually want a rectangle filling the space up, and then maybe I want like, you know, an arc right here showing where the door opens to. Um, so obviously, that is something I could go in and place into layout, but we're drawing here, so let's, let's take a look at how to do that uh, inside of SketchUp. So I'm gonna go ahead, jump back to how I was working before, and I'm going to go into this component. Whoops, wrong, wrong one. I'm going to go into this component, and I'm going to draw some geometry on the ground. I'm going to put a rectangle right here. Represents my opening. 
I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm actually going to temporarily hide this. Another rectangle right here. And I'm going to make that the size of the actual door. So I'm going to say three foot and there we go. And then I'm going to also come in here and I'm going to put in an arc. So I'm going to use, if you guys caught that, I came to arc and I actually grab my regular arc rather than my two point arc, which is most commonly used. With my arc, I just pick the middle point. I pick the edge that I want to go out to and then I can just swing that right out. Oops, apparently I did not draw that rectangle the right size. All right, so we'll clean that up right like that. All right, and I may actually get rid of this, reverse these faces. And basically, if I triple click that, that's my 2D representation of this door that I might want. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that a separate group. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. Um, hold on, let me edit, unhide my door slab there. So all of this is one piece. This is cool because when I take this, I can actually grab this and uh, slot, take it and make a copy and go stick it in a different doorway. The nice part where it's gonna become useful for me is if I come in here, I can grab some of these pieces and maybe I'll take these, the two 3D pieces and I'll put them on a layer called Doors 3D. Enter. And then I'll grab this component right here I'll put that on a layer called Doors 2D. See, I have these two layers now. Whoops, I called it Door versus Doors. Oh, man, everything's falling apart. I can edit that. So I have Doors 2D and Doors 3D. So now this is where, this is cool, because what that means is as I'm prepping the output, I can do all my work or my walkthroughs, my flythroughs, my renders with this on, but when I, it does come time to output to layout, I can real quickly make that change. Again, one component, I didn't have to place two different things or move two different things around. And then I can actually come in here and when I get my section in, look at that from above, there's my nice 2D representation, my 2D call out for that door. Um, again, all in one spot. So I don't have to go in and replace. I don't have to do a find and replace, re search, take that out, put it back in, anything like that. Um, I also did not include the trim on here, so I have just that call out. If you want the trim, of course, you could put the extra rectangles on here also, but uh, kind of a nice option, a quick way to toggle from what you would need for a 3D drawing, like I said, a fly through animation, render, that sort of thing where I actually want that door and 2D, which is what I want to prep for layout for my actual drawings. So, and again, since this is all in one component, if I want to duplicate that and put it on another door, I can really just click right here and we'll drag it right over and stick it onto this door right here. And now that one, same thing, is ready to be toggled just like the other. So to turn my 2D off because I'm in 3D or swap that to 2D when I'm ready to go to output. So there you go. Just another little tip for how you can uh, speed up the processing of architectural drawings. Again, we didn't really go over how to draw anything cool, but uh, hopefully that helps you if you are in a situation where you want to create both 3D imagery and 2D imagery from the same model, which of course is kind of the goal when you're doing something like this. So hopefully that helps. If you have another tip that you uh, use with door components, love to hear it. Leave a comment down below. Uh, subscribe so you see the rest of this list. And if you did like it, tell us why you liked it. Or even click the like, then we'll know you liked it. We like making these videos, but they mean a lot more when they're showing the things that you wanna see. Thank you.